everyone, I'm Keenan 47 aka Wolfkeen, and welcome to the first round of my Season 4 Speed Impressions, where I'm going to review 6 episodes in 2-3 to three minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh my god, Twilight is a Mary Sue! Except not really. Yeah, this was pretty much like the season that started after Twilight became an alicorn back when Season 3 was still a thing. Let's face it, guys. When Season 3 just ended, people were worried that with Twilight being an alicorn, she would become something like a Mary Sue. Luckily, that didn't occur. So the episode begins pretty much with Twilight trying to adjust to her new role as being a princess. However, she is not very comfortable with the idea of her friends calling her a princess, and she's still not used to the idea of being a princess in general, to the point that she kind of doubts her own ability in some cases. Something that is actually brought up in the Equestria Girls movie, which I will review that in the near future. Now, the one thing that happens in this episode is that there's this weird black vine that's obviously, like, you know, took over Canterlot, which basically took Celestia and Luna captive, and is now spreading through Ponyville. When Twilight goes to Ponyville, she tries to figure out exactly where the black vine came from. One of the ideas she thought of was Discord, but it turns out to be a dead end, and then she ends up drinking a potion, which allows her to see into the past and allowing her to see exactly where the origin might be, which leads to this thing called the Tree of Harmony. So the idea of the story is Twilight and her friends trying to find the Tree of Harmony and basically trying to stop the Black Vine. Now I'm going to be honest and say this right now guys, I quite like this episode for specific reasons. It's because not only are Twilight's friends adjusting to Twilight's new role, but you also have Twilight herself who's adjusting to the new role, which is honestly a very relatable situation. Imagine if you had a promotion at work or maybe you had a new title, your co-workers, your friends would have to get used to that kind of new thing from you and they wouldn't know how to treat you. Would they treat you differently because of the new title or do they treat you the same regardless because of the person that you actually are? It's actually a very thought-provoking thing. When It's actually very thought-provoking when you think about it. Though of course this episode also reminds me of the first episode of the show because in the first episode Twilight thought she had to do everything by herself. While here, her friends feel like that Twilight shouldn't do everything at the moment. Feeling like if Twilight was to get in danger or get captured, especially with no princesses left in Equestria, there could be chaos. And they're actually kind of right in that front. So, in the, in the first episode of the entire series, we had Twilight trying to do things on her own without her friends. And now we have her friends trying to do things without Twilight. But let's face it, their friendship is so strong that they need each other to actually, you know, like, take care of situations like this which does end up being a thing at the end of the day. Pretty much the episode ends with them finding this box from the Tree of Harmony, which ends up being the seasonal arc throughout the entirety of the, you know, the entirety of Season 4. What do I think about this episode? I think it's okay. Like, I don't think it's anything too grand. I mean, the humor is really good. This episode has really good humor. I love the message that's incorporated, especially the idea of adjusting to a new role and a new title. And I like the story. It's like there were no real glaring omissions within the episode that I had. This is actually a really good two-parter. Not the best. I still feel like Return of Harmony is my personal favorite, but for season four standard, I have to say this is pretty good. So yeah, really good episode. Great start to season four. Oh, hey, look, it's a Scooby-Doo episode. No, seriously, really think about what I just said right there. Castlemania, which it's an obvious spoof off of Castlevania when you really think about it is a Scooby-Doo episode through and through, with the idea of basically like all these misunderstandings, ghosts, and other stuff like that, and hell, it even borrows tropes from Scooby-Doo. I'm pretty sure anybody could tell you that, and, you know. The episode pretty much begins with Twilight trying to do research on the box that she found from the Tree of Harmony. Celestia suggests that she goes to the old castle of the two Pony Sisters, which we haven't seen since Season 1, not counting the Season 4 premiere. But for some reason, every member of the main six ends up going there for some dumb reason or another. Rainbow Dash and AJ end up going because they're doing a competition. And Rarity and I think Fluttershy, was it? Went together as well. Like, pretty much every member of the main six ended up in the castle at some point or another. For some weird reason or another. You kind of get the whole idea if you really think about it. The whole idea of the story is, well, not really a story. Twilight's trying to do her research while everybody else is just going through massive shenanigans throughout the entirety of the castle, leading to basically them finding a journal that belonged to Celestia and Luna, and them having an idea of actually writing a journal throughout the entirety of the series, which is supposed to replace the letter system that we've known from Celestia. Now, I'm going to be honest, I like this idea that instead of writing letters to Celestia, they're writing journal entries that they can read off of each other, because 
maybe someone learned a lesson and maybe they want to read through the journal and see what they went through or some of the adventures that they went through. They could probably learn a lesson from their journal entry. It's actually a very thought-provoking thing and in general, journals are a really cool thing to keep. I used to keep one a long time ago. Not anymore, of course, but it's actually a really cool thing to try and keep. Try it sometime. It's actually not that bad. But when it comes to the entirety of the episode, there's no real story behind it. It's mainly gags and various other things of that nature, which... It's funny, I'll give it that. It has some good humor behind it, and especially some of the gags and such, but overall, this is by far the definition of a filler episode. This episode, th we thought we were going to get more research on the idea of the, you know, the box that we found in the season premiere, but we didn't. We ended up just establishing the journal, which isn't a bad idea. I'm not saying it is, but it's just kind of weird that this episode is, you know, like after the season premiere we get this episode if that makes any sense all in all fun episode to watch but nothing too noteworthy these two are so similar it's uncanny the reason why i said what i said right back there was because well the idea with like this entire story let me get into it so the episode begins with dare you know like basically rainbow dash waiting for the next daring dude book when she finds out that it's been apparently delayed so what happens is that she ends up talking to twilight to help her find daring well, you know, the one who writes the books, A.K. Yearling, to try to find out where she lives and maybe help her in some way so she could get the book produced a little quicker. They end up finding A.K. Yearling's house, and, well, she ends up getting attacked by a group of thugs, and then we find out that Daring Do is, in fact, a real pony. A.K. Yearling is Daring Do. When many people saw this portion of the episode, I know a lot of them flipped their craps and otherwise, saying, Oh, this is crap! Daring Do should be a real pony! I'm honestly okay with Darren Do being a real pony, and can I say something for real, guys? We are watching a show about pastel-colored ponies who use the power of friendship to shoot rainbow beams at thousand-year-old villains, and Darren Do being real is the biggest breaker for you guys? I know I'm just kind of being like a bit of a, you know, like a... Uh, like that, just being a bit of a bleh. It's because I think people are just taking it out of proportion. I don't mind Darren Do being a real pony. Because honestly, it just kind of shows that there's other heroes in the world besides the main six. Because if the main six had to save the world all the time, holy crap would they be disheveled as all hell. Let's face it. Back onto the story, what ends up happening is that Rainbow Dash actually gets to work with Darren Do, but at one point she ends up getting her captured. This actually leads to Rainbow Dash defacing her own value, and we actually get the moral of the of the story, which is try not to put your idols so high in the pedestal that you actually start to devalue your own self-worth. It's actually a really good moral because let's say you looked up to someone, a content provider, and let's say you compared yourself to that content provider, you're going to feel as though you don't stack up to that person and start devaluing you, you know, devaluing yourself as a content creator and hell you can end up hurting your like you know yourself you know like your pride and stuff like that doing that it's honestly a really good message that not only kids and adults need to learn it really is so all in all i don't think this episode is bad actually i really freaking love this episode because i'm a fan of the uncharted games i'm a fan of national treasure i'm a fan of indiana jones i'm a fan of daring do this episode had such good adventure plots that it reminded me too much of uncharted 2 and the reason why i said it reminded me of uncharted 2 was also because of this book which is apparently the first time daring do and dr cavaleron met so that's why i made the comparison at the beginning of the video like i did so yeah Really love this episode. Holy crap, is Diamond Tiara up? This one is the episode that really wanted me to take a rope and strangle the living crap out of Diamond Tiara. And here's why. The episode begins with, of course, talking about the Equestria Games. They actually want to have representatives from Ponyville to represent, you know, the Ponyville team. Which I think is a little a bit of a cool concept, because let's face it... Why not have kids in that kind of field or something like that? You know, something small that they could be a part of. So the Kingdom of Crusaders think about having their own little act, and they actually do really well at it. To the point that Diamond Tiara decides to insult the Kingdom of Crusaders in a different way. By insulting Scootaloo's inability to fly. This, to many people, was a bit of a low blow. And hell, it is to me, because some people bring up the disabled argument. 
I don't know if I would bring up the same argument of that, but I would like to say it's a huge blow to someone's self-esteem when you say something of that nature. Like when you say, oh, people around your, like, you know, your, like, age were able to do, like, this and that, and yet you're somehow not able to? It's a serious blow to a person's self-esteem because they really consider that fact that you know, the person said as an insult and then try so hard to try to rectify that only to keep failing and failing and failing, worsening their self-esteem to the point that they just give up. It's a very relatable situation when you really think about it in certain scenarios. So that's pretty much what the episode is. Skulu trying to learn how to fly, but of course her inability is just making her more irritable both towards her friends and everybody else to the point that she refuses to compete. And hell, she doesn't even get on the train with her friends. But then again, her friends come to her and, you know, basically tell her to forget about what Diamond Tiara said, that, you know, we'll do the routine the way we needed to do it. And hell, even Rainbow Dash came to her and told her that, hey, basically, like, Skulu asked, will I ever be able to fly? Rainbow Dash said, hey, someday you may be able to, someday you may not be able to. Who cares? You are awesome in your own way. And that's a really cool thing to say to someone. It's like, Forget about what your what your current abilities is, because you're still good in your own way. You don't have to be like everybody else in a certain way, if I'm explaining it right. And not to mention, this was the first episode, I believe, to have the first song, which was Hearts as Strong as Horses, which my one of my favorite songs of season four. Unbelievably good piece. So all in all, Flight to the Finish, really good episode, really good moral, really good song, just Overall, a really freaking good episode. I got no complaints with it. And if I do, they're minor. Hey, look, the main six finally got nerfed. I'm going to be honest here. I'm not the biggest fan of this episode, and it's mainly because of one simple fact. I'm not into comic book stories or comic book superheroes. I'll fully admit that this is a concept I'm not into, but let's get into it. The episode begins with Spike reading one of his, like, comics, which apparently belongs to the Power Ponies, who are supposed to be six super powerful ponies, along with their assistant, Humdrum. What ends up happening throughout the episode is that we get this idea of Spike, you know, feeling like he's not as useful as the rest of the main six, and then he, and then when he's done reading the comic, he reads, like, this one line that drags him and the main six into the comic. So now in order for them to escape the comic, they have to basically reenact the story and defeat the maniac. Yes, that's really her name. First and foremost, I'm going to say this right now, I don't like the story concept because it's just another Spike self-confidence episode. I feel like we've gotten a few of these already where Spike felt like, you know, like was not confident in his abilities or something like that. And always was told that he needs to be more confident in his abilities. And here we are again with Spike feeling useless, not as confident in himself, and yada yada yada. Being made the comic relief. And this is just a problem I had throughout the entirety of Season 4. Spike was the butt of so many jokes throughout the entirety of Season 4. Which bugs the living crap out of me, but what can you do, right? The other problem I have with this episode is that they the only way to make the main six actually look like they were struggling was to actually nerf their ability even though a lot of their abilities were kind of what they were used to twilight being able to use ice abilities even though she's used to using more types of magic applejack not knowing how to use a lasso even though she well you've seen her multiple times and it just kind of hits that point where it just kind of gets dumber and dumber in certain cases i don't know if that's a trope of the comic book series or anything like that but it's one i can't get into because i'm not into that kind of thing and, of course, the moral of the episode is just, like, you know, you know, about self-confidence and stuff like that. Like I said, I don't like this episode, not only because I'm not a fan of the comic book kind of, like, license, but also its story concept is not exactly the best, if you ask my honest opinion. Would I put this episode in my least favorite category? Possibly, but probably not because I don't hate this episode and I don't like this episode. But I could fully admit this is an episode that's not for me. I will fully admit that. This is an episode that's not for me. But if you're into the comic book license and otherwise, I'm pretty sure you'll get an enjoyment out of it. At least I hope you will. I'm not the only one who gets a Tim Burton vibe from this episode, am I? Truth be told, I'm not the biggest fan of Bats. I don't think it's a bad episode in any way, shape, or form, but... It's one episode that I have a hard time remembering except for its visuals. And let me explain. 
The episode pretty much begins with the apple harvesting, which of course is a good time for AJ, you know, profit and all that. But for some reason, some of the apples are in fact looking rotten, almost like their juices were sucked out. That's when we learn about the vampire fruit bats, which apparently are a scourge in the apple family's farm, which have caused problems for them in the past. So AJ wants to try to get rid of the vampire fruit bats, but Fluttershy is one of the few who wants to try to help them, defend their being here as a good thing, saying that they'll actually help the farm rather than harm them. So the idea of the entire episode is pretty much like AJ trying to push in her agenda while Fluttershy trying to prove her agenda, which then leads to this weird freaking scenario of Twilight taking away their ability to eat apples, and yet somehow... The magic from being able to eat apples transferred to Fluttershy because she was using the stare and oh my god my head already hurts. You can kind of see where I'm getting at with this episode guys. This one's a bit of a brain scramble because I get that magic works in mysterious ways but this is kind of on the nose when you really think about mysterious ways of certain things to happen because Fluttershy ends up becoming a bat. I don't know how to feel about that, to be honest. Now, like I said, it's not a bad episode. The visuals remind me heavily of, like, Nightmare Before Christmas. Hell, even the musical score reminds me of Nightmare Before Christmas, which, love that movie. And the characters are in character. I love the little character interactions that we have. The only problem is that the story itself involves you suspending your disbelief to such a grand extent that unless you're able to, you'll start to pick apart the logical flaws and otherwise, which is a problem I have. I do end up picking apart the logical flaws and otherwise within this episode. Do I hate this episode? No. Do I think this episode is good? Mm, to, su to some degree, yes. Like I said, visuals, music, and otherwise, good stuff. But is this episode one that I think would be, you know, in my favorite or least favorite? No, but it is one I don't mind watching from time to time. It's one of those, I like it, but I don't love it, and I definitely don't hate it, if that makes sense. And thus includes round one of my Speed Impressions Lightning Round for Season 4. Next up will be round two, so pay attention for that in the near future. So until next time, I'm Keenan 47 aka Wolfkeen. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>